generation of international street artists are the latest hot property for galleries, art collectors and big advertising brands. The movement started in the late 70s when the emergence of hip-hop and its spray can offspring graffiti changed the streets of New York and consequently spread like a virus across the urban landscapes of the rest of the world. Back in the day, the thing that defined us was our medium, was our spray can. You know, it was a, a tool we introduced as a means of expression. Street culture started to emerge at the time with DJs, with musicians, with visual artists like this, working, collaborating, then painting all over the subway. After years of tagging streets and trains, some of New York's early spray can writers successfully blagged their way into the modern art establishment. Keith Haring and Jean-Michel Basquiat became major international artists. Their graffiti-inspired works are now part of any decent collection. The roots are really from the 80s, where effectively Keith Haring went on the subway with the charcoal and was making drawings. You could del delete afterwards, run to another spot, make something else. You had Basquiat, you had Ramelzi. All this generation in New York were really working outside. I rode an A train, and the A train was switched to a D train by the uh, subway masters. And you had two or three names written on it, like Wink, Welch, Die. If they got matched up with an IRT car, now you end up having an ionic statement, Wink, Welch, Die. None of the writers actually did this on purpose, but it was the subway commanders that switched the train cars the train pages that made these sentences roll. And so you had the biggest book on the planet. New York is completely different now than it was a few years ago. First of all, there was all the Lower East Side, the Bowery, there were 15 20 years ago, which were only inhabited by artists without money and homeless. I started to cut off some of the pieces of the street, to keep the postal cards. One day, an artist m'a offered a piece. Après, je me suis rendu compte que je pouvais acheter des œuvres à des artistes qui commençaient, des choses que je trouvais bien et qui ne coûtaient pas cher du tout et qui les aidaient à vivre et qui les encourageaient. French fashion designer Agnes B has always been a strong supporter of up-and-coming artists. Even her company delivery vans are effectively mobile street art commissions. In her Parisian gallery, Agnes B showcases modern art with a capital M next to her comprehensive street art collection, including early canvas pieces by one-time spray can legend Futura 2000. Futura, for example, is someone who has been able to make logos, des, des choses graphiques sur computer. He is very strong. And it's related to the mode, it's related to the music. He makes pochettes of discs. He is in the great tradition of the graphists New Yorkers. Former train tagging graffiti pioneer Futura has become a graphic design icon whose work is very much in demand by streetwear brands, print publications and record labels. I've been very fortunate to have transcended a life of a graffiti writer in New York City to become a graphic artist, a painter, you know, toy maker. This is one of my cooler pieces. This is my 5300. This is where I built most of my website. The first two years, 96, 97, I did all my web work on this bad boy. A lot of people call them personal computers, but nobody ever personalizes them. Futura is inspired by Hollywood cult movies, trash pop culture, and toy merchandising. Can't get enough, can't get enough. This Devilman series is the main part of my collection. I guess my toy collecting fantasy has spilled over into physically making toys now. This was the uncle figure that was made. Uh, actually, this is, the, uh, this is the original production model. Basically, I developed a character-based family for that whole campaign. And since producing all that work, people have approached me to create a story, to create an identity for them, give them a name, give them a planet, a country, you know, whatever, an address. This is what's called the Rolls Royce of your toy helicopter, but it's uh, the detail on this thing is really fabulous. 
If you get your 12 inch figures in these, they're pretty happy to be toys, I guess, huh? In a sense, I have four years in the military, so I've been trained by my government to understand how to get a job done. If I'm getting a job done for real, where I'm playing with million dollar toys, I can do your graphic logo, or I can arrange a little uh, group here to get together and do something, you know what I mean? So my skills, operational skills, organizational skills, all that shit comes from, you know, way, way ago. And that's like secondary nature to me. It's not like, I'm not overwhelmed by the tasks of civilian society. Pretty simple to live out here if you got any sort of... Russian night vision right here. It's an expensive piece, but uh, necessary when you're out there in the field. The military toy element here in this room was intended to coexist with the military decor and to offset anybody's theory that, oh, this guy's really hardcore revolutionary. I mean, the toys only deaden the seriousness of that by turning it into a bit more fun. And that's what I'm all about. I'm about fun. I'm definitely, I'm a serious person, but I don't take myself seriously. Another former New York graffiti sprayer is Ramelzy. He creates striking and more than a little edgy performance art in self-made street art costumes. I walk down the street, people look at me and say, who the hell are you? And they'll walk right upon me and ask this. They can sit right in the bar and a guy will get up or a girl will get up and they'll touch me on the shoulder. Who are you? I'm just an average Joe. Ramelzy, il ressort une espèce de culture américaine reliée à son enfance et puis c'est pas que ça, c'est profond, il y a des symboles et ça, ça crée son style, il est très très fort. Il est très fort picturalement et il est très fort aussi dans le fond. For his artworks and public performances, Ramelzy has created a personal mythology of his own gods based on science fiction, horror and even quantum physics. I am one of the gothic futurists in the Alpha's Bet of the equation known as the Ram LZ. I'm some 16 billion years old. The particular person I'm acting out right now has a theorem that if he can boomerang through time, he can make sure that a sledgehammer causes a cosmic flush. As for the rest, Crux the Monk, Alpha Positive, Destiny and Destiny, Win, the mother of natures. Igniter, the master Aphrodite, he's a judge. The secretary known as Bane the Insane. The maitre d' known as Chaser the Eraser. You have the Gashalier, which is like on my t-shirt. Everyone calls it the Ram LZ because it's the one that's the main character. You have uh, Reaper Grimm. You have a pimp known as Barshaw Gangstar the Duck. Oh yeah, and uh, Chimer is a bookie. He takes bets. Ramelzy's costumes, paintings, and art objects are made from throwaway materials found in New York's skips. His recycled street works are collector's items for New York's cashed up hip hop stars. Stealth Bomber S. It is loaded with uh, GAT gun markers and pens. We have a laser shoot in the front. We use knives and spoons because they have great contours. I use wheels as grinding blades. My mechanics always work. Uh, these things was actually done on the trains. Because this subway system here in New York is not no longer available, you know, as a as a source for the, for the for the guys to go and, and and bomb and put their work up, it's limited where they can sort of put their work, and that's put it back into the street again. You know, like on buildings, on handball courts, in schoolyards. You can pretty much go around town anywhere, and you'll see Espo pieces in all five boroughs in any neighborhood. 
This is an Espo piece somewhere. Now, they've been really buffing him out. You know, they've been trying to erase his name from everywhere, but you can still see like they don't do a very good job. So you see like some letters stick out every once in a while. Real estate is at such a premium here, and it's all about the fact that everything costs money, and you know the space you're standing on, somebody wants to charge you for it, and the air you breathe, you know, if they can find a vending machine for it, they will. When it comes into Manhattan, there's all these graph pieces. This one wall is just, this one building is actually just bombed up and down. You can have as much space as you want in New York City, as long as you're, you know, fast and smooth about it, but. <laughs> There's a lot of New York graffiti writers that are still doing it, like Brian, you know, cause and and Phil, and Espo. But for New York to be the mecca of that movement, it's ironic that in fact now it's kind of like a lost city, you know, in terms of the history of it. You know, and it's more of a, wow, remember, it's, it's very reminiscent. It's just kind of like just nostalgic almost. You know, it's not really, yeah, we're living on memories here. It's to be respected what European artists have done with the initial graffiti style that was imported to them some 15 years ago. Some of the writers from Europe are some of the best writers in the world because they developed a style that had already been created here and they were able to look and, and, and adapt. I went to New York City in 1971. I tried to make a, a pieces, you know, like uh, I saw it in New York, but I didn't have the good technique because it's a very difficult technique to spray on freehand on the wall. I make one, you know, in a, on the wall in Paris, and it was horrible. So the day after, I say, okay, I can't do that. Maybe you can do something with stands here. <laughs> Rather than spraying directly onto walls, Parisian street art pioneer Black Lerat copies his stenciled shapes onto cut-out paper. His paste-ups are then plastered around the urban world. The important thing in, in stencil is that you can represent the same image at different places of the city. I like the connection between this soldier who is a symbol of uh, the war in Iraq, the word the foundation, which was written before I was here, which means in Arabic language, Al-Qaeda. Also the connection with building behind this image, which remember the tower in New York. And also we can see sometimes some planes in the sky. You can find that kind of connection when you work alone in your studio. Fleck Lerat's stencil work has only recently made the transformation from wall to canvas. Blake Lerat's work was, or is, significant because he was one of the first people, one of the, the founders of, of the stencil art movement. And I think for, for people today, these are iconic images of his that he was doing over 30 years ago. And I think for people, there's a lot of importance in that. My first stencil was small rat, long like that. I sprayed it on the walls running everywhere in the street, so th that was my first stance here. The UK's best-known street artist has adapted Bleck's trademark rat image. Banks's stencil pieces achieve record prices and are collected by celebrities like Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie and fellow artist Damien Hirst. We heard a lot of people talking about how Banksy was derivative of this guy called Bleck Lerat. And I'd always been a, a fan of graffiti and street-based works. I'd only researched it so much and I wasn't familiar with Bleck. I like rats because in rat, R-A-T, you have art, you know, it's a, it's a connection. The rat has the myth of bringing the plague. Graffiti is like a plague because you you know, when you start, you can't stop. Mon 
nom est Invader, mais tout le monde m'appelle Space Invader. Depuis quelques années, j'envahis le monde avec des carreaux de mosaïque que je cimente sur les murs des grandes villes et qui représentent des Space Invaders. Parisian street artist Space Invader is inspired by the imagery of the electronic revolution of the computer age. Quelque chose qui me plaît beaucoup aussi dans, dans ces créatures, c'est qu'elles ressemblent un petit peu à des virus électroniques. Je suis un virus en quelque sorte, puisque j'envahis les villes de manière illégale. Même en général, je prépare une pièce en fonction d'un lieu. Je choisis une direction de regard, je choisis des couleurs. La plupart du temps, j'utilise du ciment. Il m'arrive aussi d'utiliser différentes sortes de colle. When you arrive in Paris from the highway, from the airport, the first thing you see facing you, a huge obey together with Space Invader. Amazing, they choose really the right spot. To... It's very interesting how these artists are understanding movement of people in cities. For the Baltic building, he was lighting the city like a lighthouse. You could see it from very far. There's a new crop of graffiti writers pure spray painters, guys that just are taggers. And there's also a new movement of street artists doing that street art thing a bit differently. Sao Paulo is the upcoming center of new street art styles, best known for the lyrical works of Brazilian twin brothers Otavio and Gustavo, working as Os Gemios, which is Portuguese for twins. A gente acredita muito no sonho, né? Então a gente mistura o que a gente sonha com o que a gente vê todo dia na rua, com o que a gente tem muita influência no folclore brasileiro mesmo, no povo brasileiro. Like the early graffiti writers, Os Gemios often work in larger crews involving other Sao Paulo-based artists such as Herbert and Nina. It's very important. One, you paint, the person is aware of what you're doing, and you're aware of what the person wants to do, and mix it all into one thing. Sao Paulo is Aqui em São Paulo, você comprar uma lata de spray é cara, não é barato uma lata aqui. E aqui, a molecada que faz bombardeio não tem muita grana pra ficar comprando spray. Então, o normal aqui em São Paulo é fazer bombardeio com latex e misturar ela com spray. Os Gemos is a very interesting um, example. They are mixing somehow the favelas with social attitude versus the cliché of Brazil with the lighting and things like this. I think that São Paulo is a city totally anarchist, let's say. There is everything. It is a script paulist. A mistura disso, da pichação com, com o spray can art, que sai uma outra coisa que eu também não sei o que é. Os estilos mudam enormemente, isso evolui muito rápido. Tout d'un coup, il y en a un qui fait un autre style, une autre technique, c'est repris. C'est justement un art qui est tout le temps en mouvement depuis que je le connais. Ça a évolué, même si c'était déjà à la bombe. C'était fait avec des sprays, comme les trains étaient faits avec des sprays. Après, il y a eu de plus en plus gros feutres, ils sont mis à peindre avec les feutres. Après, il y a le métallique, les lignes étaient plus droites, après c'est plus courbe, chacun a son style. 
Working in graffiti crews has a long tradition in New York. Today's most respected crew are the Barnstormers, a group of street artists gathered around founder David Ellis. I was influenced with the whole graph scene, things I was seeing coming out of New York, but uh, feeling a little remote with tractors and barns and this kind of thing while I was growing up. So I played my part, you know, I came up with my tag and did a few barns. Then eventually moved to New York and uh, decided it'd be nice to go back and just blow it up, maybe do a hundred barns. It's kind of full circle. I would compare it to jazz, improvisational music, you know, everything in the room can set off an idea. It's a matter of kind of having trust what the other people are going to paint and then, you know, know that if you go over somebody, it's probably better that you did. It's for a reason. And before you know it, the trip's over and we've done, like, you know, 12 barns or four tractor trailers and I mean, 18 wheelers, actually. And you look on the pictures after the fact, and you're like, wow, that actually happened. Half of us knew each other before. The other half never met each other. You know, it just grouped a lot of us together and created a, a nice, like, family, you know? We're all indebted to each other, in a way. Most artists in New York City are treated like panhandlers or, or booksellers or just aggressive, you know, pamphleteers. So to go down to North Carolina and just be given love and, and be given the, the means to do what we had to do, it was incredible. It's the way it should be. And then, then I came home and had the police at my door and aggravating me and, you know, it's, it's just been hell ever since. We set up about uh, eight or ten panels, you know, as many as we could line up in one space. We'd paint on that, trying to make something like semi-contiguous. When we're done with that, we'd take the last panel, move it over, and attach new panels and try to kind of continue it for the most part, you know? In their group shows, the Barnstormers combine styles as varied as their crew's origins. The 20 plus members come from Korea, Japan, Ukraine, as well as all over the United States. You know, now it's developed way beyond that. You know, people are doing public works with paint, spray paint, airbrush. You know, it's become more developed, more refined, but that's only natural through the maturity of it and evolution of time. You know, like you would, you would expect it to like develop itself. We can say that in this urban art you have different school, you know. You have people who talk about themselves, some people they talk about the, the happiness of the life, they talk about love, they talk about hate. The stretched gunslingers and street fighters of French-born WK Interact are an integral part of Manhattan's urban landscape. If you look at the drawing without the phone, without the piece of metal, without the little sticker, it will be not the same thing. That's what I like. That is why I'm doing a lot of stuff on the street. The sun changing, the people passing, the car stop. It's all some kind of emotion. When I find a spot, I find a model, I stylish the model, I take the picture, and after I work on a very small image, and I coming back, I project the image and I paint black. Sometimes you see that's a problem with the side work. Sometimes you have to calculate exactly how big you can project and be sure you're going to have the right size. I paint pretty quick. This thing took me a day. The one I did before upstairs was, took me a week because the weather was bad, it was raining all the time. The problem is not how fast I'm going to go, most of the time the sidewalk are not good, the sun in summer is very hot, in winter it's very cold, it's, in, it's almost freezing, the paint doesn't dry, it's very difficult. It can be 
here for a few days, you can be here for months, you can be here for years. The most interesting idea is to create some little piece like that and you put all over the city and each time it's a different story. Santa's Ghetto is an alternative Christmas art sale organised by street art collective Pictures on Walls. For one month, the online print company takes over an empty store right in the centre of London's shopping mile, drawing new kinds of buyers and generating much needed cash for young artists. Street art is a new movement. A lot of the people that are involved in this movement aren't tied to the kind of the art gallery traditions. They're kind of young entrepreneurs. They're quite happy to take over an empty space or a derelict space, get together with a few people and present their work on their terms. Selling paintings and selling prints of my work is what I would like to do. It's how I would like to, you know, live and survive. What are you living from? What do you mean, the way and surviving? Yeah, Well, now I'm doing pretty well. You will uh, ask me this question two years ago. I will tell you, well, it's, I don't know, I'm not sure yet. I'm not successfully paying my bills always on time and I'm not doing a lot of things that I sh you know, most 30-year-olds are trying to do right now, but I'm, uh, I feel like I'm making things that are making a difference somehow. Les artistes ont une vie très dure, que ce soit des artistes euh, qui sont dans le monde de l'art, qui sont plus dans le monde de l'art que les graffiti artistes, mais je pense que les artistes ont une vie très dure, très difficile de toute façon. Et il y en a beaucoup qui ne vivent pas du tout euh, bien, ni dans des grands appartements, hein, dans les artistes. Santa's Ghetto is supported by England's best-known street artist. Banks's highly collectible works help to attract big crowds and media attention. Some of these artists have been successfully selling their work through shows and exhibitions that they themselves have organised. These people are now almost acting like agents or gallery owners to the new artists but it's all being done in a much fairer and a much more honest way. The Parisian art temple, Palais du Tokyo, has been bombed by French street artist André. Inside the museum walls, André runs a dedicated street art store, selling limited editions, presented rather coolly, in converted shop refrigerators. Black Block, c'est un peu une sorte de plateforme, euh, lieu d'expérimentation, de production, euh, et pouvoir présenter les choses, les produits, rencontrer des gens, euh, et c'est une adresse. Je pense qu'on fait partie d'une génération où on a grandi avec les Lego, les Playmobil, les, les personnages de la Guerre des Étoiles. Une réelle culture de la figurine produite à partir d'un film ou d'un dessin animé, donc on a grandi avec ça. Licenses for vinyl figures and designer toys have become an important revenue stream for street artists. 
Michael Lowe, comme les éditions japonaises de Kubrick, pour qui je travaille d'ailleurs, on est en train de faire une série. Pour nous, tout d'un coup, c'est fascinant d'avoir, puisque c'est souvent et des séries limitées, mais d'avoir tout d'un coup une esthétique qui n'est pas décidée par une multinationale. Mais d'ailleurs, l'idée de Black Block, c'est tout l'argent qu'on gagne, on le réinvestit pour produire et éditer des éditions d'artistes. Puisqu'on a édité, ça va de séries de t-shirts à des objets d'artistes, à des sérigraphies, des affiches. Dès qu'on peut, on produit ou une édition ou même une exposition, une intervention d'un artiste. André est l'un des plus intéressants street artistes en France. Il a contaminé tous les post-boxes dans la street où il a transformé ces objets en un smiley finger. I think the English call it Mr. Stick Up. Andre has become a fully fledged cultural entrepreneur. From running exhibitions, creating artworks and toy ranges for multinational youth brands, to opening clubs in Paris and other cities. Most of these artists have their own websites, showing things that they're doing. Somebody goes out, paints something in the street, the next day it's up on their site. These websites are a way of cutting out the galleries, cutting out the agents, dealing directly with the buyer. On his website, Futura keeps a visual diary of wherever he is in the world. Futura has always nurtured direct communications with his internet-based fan community. My cyber base is growing because I'm reaching out now to people who I don't know and who are apparently gleaming some knowledge from what I'm doing. You know, what is it to me to send out a postcard or a little box with a t-shirt to some kid that sent me clever email? And I hope that spill off of that grassroots communication and contact, you know, that's the kind of thing like an artist really needs. The funny thing is mostly uh, the collectors are their communities. These artists are using the web as all the young generation use it, as a viral way to communicate, as a way to create your own community. So they are in a lot of different platforms. They are exchanging, dialoguing, mapping. Space Invader, for example, is really mapping the work is gluing on the wall with different items and mark buildings and things like this on every city he went and it takes you to unexpected places all the time. This is the first one mm -hmm. and this is the last one. I love this one. There is nothing on it. No street, just the river. Space Invader sells his invasion maps in bookstores and galleries around the world. I wanted to invade Tokyo and New York. Au jour d'aujourd'hui, je suis à 22 villes envahies. Et pour chaque ville, je tiens un, un compte rendu de, de tous ceux qui ont été posés. Euh, par exemple, je peux te dire qu'il y en a 469 à Paris précisément. Et pour chacun, d'ailleurs, je garde aussi une photo. Ils sont localisés sur une carte. Chaque Space Invader est une création unique. Le concept, c'est qu'on peut maintenant les parrainer. C'est-à-dire que s'il y en a un qui plaît à quelqu'un dans la rue, il peut l'acheter et auquel cas il reçoit un double du Space Invader qui est dans la rue avec la photo de l'original. They want to invade the world, which is exactly what every visual artist are interested in. No one is interested to work just in a corner and make a drawing or painting just for two or three persons. Our stormers as a whole is it's not one person, it's, it's just a collective. We want to take it and go international with it, you know. Whether it means we go national first you know, whether we get a corporate sponsor or whatever, like, it's a project, just keep painting barns. It's good to learn from the other people, from the other city. Because this image, it's New York. Everything you can see on the street, it's what New York gave to me. So I hope if I go in London or if I go to Japan, I will come up with some story. It will be totally different. All street artists travel the world and leave their works behind, like here in Tokyo. A global presence is essential, the first step towards the all-important recognition by peers and future art and advertising clients. So more you give me place, more you give me time, or more I'm traveling, more I'm going to expand my own image. I use my green finger to stamp each wall I usually paint. Street culture, 
as a complete different system in itself to exist, to dialogue with their audience. Even the magazines are different. And the crowd is, is amazing. It's international, it's global. So all these artists, they are really cultural entrepreneurs, where from André inventing clubs or hotels to other artists making sneakers or making t-shirts or making other objects, but in a real factory system. They're making a limited edition. They are really uh, reinventing what an artist can be today. Most big-name street artists have their own clothing line or create special editions for major youth and sportswear brands. Futura and fellow street artist Stash started their own label in New York's Lower East Side. What's up, here? Yeah. Recon is our first shop, you know, initially that we had to give us a chance to have some control over our own distribution locally and then get other brands in from friends and stuff like that. The business of running a store or that sort of management aspect of, of what we do, I got nothing really to do with. I'm more of art director and creative type person that doesn't really have to worry about that. If I can see kids out there running my shit, good, 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 good. If they just let me see them every once in a while, you know, you see them in London or Germany or Japan or stuff like that. If I can see some kid walking down the street with a t-shirt on, it'd make me feel happy. Just to see it would be great, eh? Or a grown guy, uh, 55 years old, $30,000 painting on the wall. You know, it'd be nice to see every once in a while. Whose game you dealing? Whose cards you feeling? Ramelsey sells paintings, customized skateboards and clothing items to street fashion brands like Supreme, whose owner made the pilgrimage to Ramelsey's mystic street art workshop. The guy called me on the email, said he liked my work, like to do something with me. Said fine, you get a deal, end of deal after the first deal. He came, he bought, he didn't know what he was getting into, I didn't know what I was getting into. He looked around, we had a good time. He bought more. He bought more. <laughs> Did he get five more? <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Je pense évidemment Coca-Cola et Nike se servent des artistes maintenant parce que ils voient que c'est dans l'air du temps. Mais il n'y a pas que. Il y a plein d'autres marques qui, qui se rapprochent tout d'un coup des artistes. At the moment, street art's very kind of cool. It's always in magazines. Advertisers are constantly using it. Big brands want to be associated with this street art movement. It's a way for them to look cool. So the option of me working for larger brands, you know, Nike, for example, doesn't really interest me. It's not something that I'm particularly keen to do. However, there are quite a few people out there that are more than happy to work for these brands. You know, so, you know, lots of money to be made. The marriage to the brand for these artists can be very positive or can be very dangerous. You can dilute yourself, you can lose yourself with big brands, but it depends what do they want from you. Things to mass market, there's no passion in any fashion at the moment. The former Scottish street vandal turned anti-fashion designer, Noki, customizes second-hand clothing using street art techniques. My first connection to street art would have been living in Old Street when I moved up there in 95. And it was street art in the sense of an energy. There was a real kind of uniform people wore. We wore ironic t-shirts, you know, people wore Mickey Mouse. None of us had ever been to Disneyland. So irony was really fresh. My favourite materials would be branded t-shirts, cracked, broken print. I'm more into the sort of direct action, DIY, you know, mark making, reclaiming stains on t-shirts by putting stencils over the top. If there's holes in it, they become mouths or eyes. When I cut the t-shirt or I hole punch the t-shirt, when I slash it, that's my breaking McDonald's windows or making, standing with a protest pole, aggravating police and aggravating the corporate. 
Noki runs a small bar and fashion boutique in Brighton, where he puts on live gigs and catwalk shows of his anti-couture work. I always just treat everything I do as one big installation. somebody buying a piece of Noki from the shop and they walk down the street, they're basically doing the protest, the silent protest, because it basically was something mass market, now it's not. shows I'm doing a culture jam on you because what you're looking at is one-off pieces it's been jammed into the system and as an independent artist Noki seems to survive very well in conceptual fashion shops what our work was being represented as a work of art I did Yoji Yamamoto at the shop I did this show in Paris called Colette Style Design I did a show for this museum called Cooper Hewitt, graphic design in New York. I don't think I'm a real artist, I think I'm very graphic. Small independent galleries like Elms Leicester in London were the original supporters of street art in the contemporary art market. At the ancient scenery painting studio, young street artists like the Australian Anthony Lister are creating works for new exhibitions in the studio that was once used for making film and theatre backdrops. The original people buying, they would buy something because they were, had brought up with names like Futura, they'd bought the t-shirt, they'd bought the trainers, they'd bought the poster, and all of a sudden they were 25 to 35, had disposable income, and buy a piece of art by one of their heroes as they were growing up. In previous days, they had music, they had their clothes, they had their films, but they never really had their art. You have young people coming in here discussing paintings like 16, 14, 15, sitting there talking about a painting for half hour. Well, that's never happened in the history of art. The typical art galleries, not interested in it up until quite recently. They've always looked at it as, you know, not real art and no money to be made in it. I think it's a real important time. I think curators are getting younger. I think the global art institution is looking a lot more in that direction. So hopefully that'll mean people that I admire that are famous within the graffiti scene but outside of which are, you know, unknowns will, uh, begin to get a little more uh, credibility. Gateshead's Baltic in the northeast of England is one of the first major art institutions that's opened its gallery spaces to a new generation of street artists.
art world in the street culture because street culture is a real culture, it's a real use culture, it's a real one. There are few people in the art world who have this understanding of this street culture. Urban art is uh, the future of art. There is no city in the world without graffiti. Even in China, you can find some artists making street urban art. The world's most prestigious art auctioneers have discovered the rocketing value of the emerging street art movement, which now sells next to its late great masters, Basquiat and Herring. Are you bidding? Basquiat from 1985? We have £300. At one million four hundred and fifty, one million five hundred thousand pounds. At one million five hundred thousand pounds. Forty five. Here you are, you guys, spending millions of pounds on loads of little drinks. <laughs> UK stencil artist Banksy is the first living street artist whose work has sold at art auctions. At Sotheby's contemporary art sale, his rude lord painting went for a record £300,000. Banks is self-publicist, you know, the same as Damien Hirst was in his day. If people see the price of his work at Sotheby's, then they start to think, well, why aren't I looking? What else is going on in this world? This moment in time, London is probably the centre for this movement. Bristol-born stencil artist Banks's blend of humour and political satire has made him popular with a new audience, who don't necessarily know much about the street art scene. Although his appearance is a well-kept secret, Banksy has become an infamous media figure who now attracts protest from the street scene itself. Stencil art was there before Banksy and will be around after Banksy. What he did, he's very good at promoting himself and what he does. He managed to paint something on the street, expressing his views, be they humour, be they political, and then get that image around the world very, very quickly. I like very much it, Nancy, that uh, he sells his paintings very expensive. It's very, very expensive now. And he's still working in the street. Despite numerous exhibitions and limited print editions, French artist Zeus still has a strong link to the streets. His visual kidnapping campaign reclaims the advertising billboards of his home city of Paris. Les gens écrivaient sur les murs, c'est une tradition depuis toujours ça. Et c'est très politique d'écrire sur les murs. Rien que de faire un graphe, c'est politique, c'est une façon... Moi, le graphe a remplacé les slogans politiques que les gens mettaient. Maintenant, c'est le geste de faire un graphe qui est politique. C'est le fait d'avoir besoin de s'exprimer sur des murs. C'est humain depuis qu'on est homme sur terre le besoin de marquer son territoire ou de marquer une trace.
Un jour, j'ai obtenu la clé des sucettes publicitaires, en fait. J'ai troqué ça avec, euh, avec quelqu'un qui travaillait chez JC Déco, c'est en échange de, de quelques billets. C'est euh, Stickers, euh, c'est le visage, du... c'est pour laisser la trace, ça fait office de signature. On va masquer leur adresse. J'aime faire de la peinture sous adrénaline, c'est quelque chose qui me... Enfin, je... c'est vraiment quelque chose qui me plaît, quoi. J'adore ça. There's just an energy about the street that's it's such a force. The same block is going to look slightly different every week, so I just keep my eyes open. I'm interested in the kids that are climbing up on rooftops and hanging out windows and like doing death-defying like mountain climbing acts to get their pieces in the middle of a building or something. But that's what really inspires me, I'd say, these days more than what's happening inside the institutions. It was really funny when Barry McGee was installing his piece at uh, Baltic or Lac Obey. They were both interested, after they finished their piece, to run outside to make another piece in the street. It never ends. It's part of your, uh, your, your, your energy. <laughs> More and more street artists, like Abe outside the Baltic Museum, are now getting commissions to create large legal works in public spaces. It could be seen as a bit selling out, but at the same time, you know when you walk into chapels and stuff like that in the old days, and these huge, great big old pictures, once you're given the side of a building to do this on, you've got time, energy, sponsorship of cranes, so they can get up really high. The person that's done it hasn't had to just do it undercover with the knowledge that it could be slammed up for doing it. Unfortunately, that becomes part of the graffiti culture as well, to be banged up means you get a medal, which could be seen as a positive thing, but at the same time it's you know, negative, because you wish you get yourself a record and go anywhere near America. Do you know what I mean? You can't go travel and be a human being because you've fucked up. Des fois, les, les polices euh, engagent la conversation, demandent pourquoi, est-ce que vous faites ça, je, quel, quel, euh, <rire> et il euh, y en a certains qui, euh, qui sont bêtes, 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 et, euh, donc qui m'emmènent au poste et qui me font passer la nuit, mais, euh, et d'autres qui, euh, qui me laissent repartir. Il m'est arrivé quelque chose l'autre jour d'assez marrant, c'est que j'étais en train de poser un Space Invader et des policiers sont venus m'arrêter, m'ont interpellé, en pensant que j'étais en train de, de voler le Space Invader et que c'était quelque chose euh, qui appartenait à la ville de Paris. Et ils pensaient que j'étais en train de le prendre alors que je venais de le poser. I was arrested many, 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 many times in many different countries. It's a part of the game, you know, it's a part of the work. It's illegal, it's illegal everywhere in the world. Now, I'm pasting posters and pasting posters is, is less dangerous than spray on the wall. And when the police come, I say, okay, I'm sorry, I removed the poster and uh, excuse me and uh, okay. Although many big names in the flourishing street art scene have managed to make a living out of their art by becoming inventive cultural entrepreneurs, they still depend on the street for artistic expression and inspiration. Graffiti, c'est même pas un résultat, c'est plutôt un acte. C'est une action. Le résultat, il est là ou pas là. I enjoy painting stuff on the street. I enjoy kind of vandalizing things. To me, that's where my art belongs and that's where it should be. Galleries Museums document the past and what's happening on the street is now. However, making canvases, making screen prints, it is a way for me to survive and it's a way for my art to continue living. How is the situation? Like, we live in art too. 
Mas a gente não considera quando você faz um, um trabalho com a técnica de grafite um, um grafite. A gente chama de decoração. Quando você está dentro do, do ambiente, é totalmente diferente. A rua você está sujeito a tudo. Assim. Você está explícito. Você está sendo mais você. Assim. Você não está sendo o que os outros querem. I believe that's my best time because it's I was making something without getting any profit and I was exciting. Now it started to be some kind of work. I want to have a social message for the people. I have to have an interaction between me and the people. When I leave an image in the street and someone is coming and uh, he draws something or he writes something on the image, I like that very much. <laughs> favorite form of expression, performance art, what I'm doing right now. I'm not interested in fame, I like infamy, because it's the best way to go. You can die as a painter, but to die as a mechanic, that's a whole lot better. Over the last few years, street art has established itself as an internationally recognized art form. But where can this street-inspired movement go from here? After works by Banksy have been boarded up, chiselled off the walls, to be sold on eBay for money far exceeding the gallery prices. So even though street art has resisted being sucked into the mainstream, like all radical or avant-garde movements, it surely will be. Do another one of them. <laughs> 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 <laughs>